Okay. The other awesome, exciting thing about things opening up is St. St. Patrick's Day activities are are yeah. on this year. Yeah. And I got asked to play in the parade, which is really great, with my friend Ina here in Toronto. And, uh, wow. Yeah, and Sylvia is going to be dancing with her school in the parade as well. So that's pretty cool. Oh, Looking wow. forward to that. They're going to be dancing on a float. And, uh, oh boy. and she said, she said, don't worry, dad, my teacher is good. And she's got, she said that she has coolers with enough Gatorade and water for six hours of dancing. Just <laughs> don't slam on the brakes. That's right. Oh my God. The worst, I don't know if I ever told you guys, but the worst parade that I ever played was for Detroit City St. Patrick's Day Parade. It was 2001. It was 2000, no, 2002. And I and I was teaching this lady who who's who, this da lady's daughter, and she was a barmaid at the old Shillelagh Pub in Detroit. Have you guys ever heard of the old Shillelagh Pub in Detroit? Okay, it's down in what they call Cork Town, which is Irish, the Irish part of town, and it is a sawdust on the floor drinking hall, you know. And uh, but it's well known in the Irish community; everybody knows about the old Shillelagh. So anyway, she asked me if I would play on their float. So I showed up. 10 in the morning, downtown in Detroit to the old Shillelagh. I get in there. Everybody is already hammered. A couple of people falling off their stools. They're drinking whiskey, right? And so it's like, okay, whatever. It's all right. So they show me the float. The float is a flatbed truck that's got a few tables and chairs on it and people actually drinking. <laughs> <laughs> it was freezing cold and I was supposed to play on the float you know and they had this little tiny clip on mic for me that they, and it wouldn't work because it was so windy the wind kept taking away my sound you know so I had to play inside the school bus that was dragging the float right and the only guy that wasn't drinking was the bus driver thank Christ almighty so I'm in there and I'm playing into this little microphone and it's going on the loudspeakers of the bus and the waitresses of the old Shillelagh, including the woman whose daughter I was teaching, were supposed to be doing Irish dancing in front of the bus. But they were also hammered. And the one, <laughs> the one kept coming up to the window and knocking on the window. And she, at one point she goes, knock, knock. That's not a hornpipe. <laughs> so that was complete disaster of a, of a parade. Gosh. And then my, my wife Jennifer and her friend John went to see the parade. And they were downtown, and they went into a pub, because it was freezing cold, and Jennifer said that on the bar, dancing on the bar, was a midget dressed as a leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> so that pretty well takes the cake for St. Patrick's Day parades, you know? <laughs> the Irish culture is the only one uh, who don't, they don't mind you... Uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, cultural appropriation? They're, like, they're okay with it. Like, the Irish are the only ones that are okay with it. You can you can try, you can pretend to be Irish on St. Patrick's Day if you want. They don't mind. <clears throat> All righty. Okay, I'm going to get tuned up here, and then we're going to get warmed up. So let me just tune my fiddle, because it's the first of the day, obviously. Grace? out so I'm gonna recheck my the I'm gonna mute you guys I'm gonna recheck my tuning again because my E was drastically out and I don't know why uh, but I'm gonna check all my other strings again because when it's when one string is really drastically out like that it'll change the other ones when you make the change to it so you got to recheck and indeed a little flatter now better okay so let's warm up with our regular g major because we're so familiar with it and it'll probably work and then you'll feel all great about yourself and then we'll move on to the key of a all right mm. okay ready go
do that again because my hand is just starting to get up in the game here. Let's do it again right away. Ready, go. <laughs> with a mind to the double stop practice that we're going to do. Okay, just thinking about it while we do it. One more arpeggio. Ready, go. with that arpeggio we'll do some double stops in the key of G and you guys remember the pattern <clears throat> we'll do two bows per for each set of double stops all right I love double stops nice rich sound let's do it ready slow which is the A1, D3 double stop. When I first put my fingers down, they weren't quite all, the, the full pressure was not there, especially on the G. So I had to bring it in. Did you guys hear that? It was kind of like, <laughs> so that's what it sounds like. But anyway, just that, that, that does happen, especially with two finger double stops. Sometimes the pressure doesn't come right in on one finger or another. So something to keep in mind. Let's do it again right away. Hopefully I'll get it better this time. Ready, go!
much better that time. How's everybody feeling about their double stops? You getting somewhere? Medium, medium success rate? Okay, that's great. So keep working on it. It's very strengthening. Julie, you're trying to say something, but you're muted. And it's probably good, whatever you're about to say. No, I'm just going to say that um, I'm very pleased with my open string double stops. Oh, good. <laughs> but they're sounding really good. And um, I'm getting much better on the one, like when I'm using just one finger. But so when I've got to use fingers on two strings, those ones are still really tricky to get into. Yes. And that's the normal progression for learning to do double stops. So keep, whatever you're doing on the open strings, just keep trying to pay attention to what's working. Because it's all the same stuff when you use your fingers as well. The only thing I'm going to say is that when you do the two finger ones, always try to tune the lower one first. Okay, it makes it a lot easier. Um, and uh, But otherwise, it'll come along. Don't worry, especially if you're having some success on the other ones. That's great. Very good. Anybody else have anything to say or ask about double stops? Heather? You looked like you had something there for a second. Oh, just just more practice exactly the same as what was just said about the two fingers yeah but your your point about tuning up the lower one first yeah i'll do that because Good. i kind of flip-flop i might tune the, the higher one first and then try to bring in the lower one yeah so i mean technically that should still work i just find it a lot easier for the year to build up have you guys ever noticed that like mm. going up a scale far more successful than coming down for some reason and i don't know what it mm. is and when you stack up notes, your ear kind of does the math. When you're when you're bringing them down, it's harder. Yes, Deborah. Um, when you say lower note, do you mean lower on the scale or lower on the position of the neck of the fiddle? No, lower on the scale. So the lower okay. pitch, the lower okay. pitch is what you want to tune first. Good question. Okay. Very good. Okay, let's do it again. With all that talking, it's going to be brilliant now. Let's do it one more time. <clears throat> Ready, go. great key of G that's great now look, before before we get into the key of A let's practice something in the key of G what was the most recent thing can somebody remind me of the music that we've been playing lately in the key of G or E minor Irish washerwoman perfect let's work on the Irish washerwoman Great tune, great key, lots of skills in there. <clears throat> I have a few young kids trying to play the Irish Washerwoman. They're trying to get those string crossings in the second part. It's a good thing to do. So let's do that. So let's try playing it about this fast. Okay, nice and mindful, trying to get her nicely in tune and a good sound. And let's do it two times. A one, two, three, go, two, three.
Well, that's a good start. Now, how's everybody feeling about the Irish washerwoman? Is it relatively okay? I mean, I'm watching everybody and it looks fine, you know? Uh, it's very slow, of course, and so it'd be good to speed it up, but otherwise it looks really good. Is anybody having any problems? Is there anything in the way, do you think, of speeding this up a little bit? The only thing I, that's going to be hard when we speed it up is that little part in the second part where you got to lean your finger over from the 3 to the to the G3, eh? And that's how I do it. I'm just going to demonstrate one more time before we try it fast so you guys can see if you can do that. You see how I do that there? I'll do it again. Oh, my disc. See that? That's all it is there. I don't even move my finger, eh? I just lean over, and it's when I, by the time I get over there, it's kind of like the side of my finger getting it. You see that? So there's even a bit of nail on there. Okay, it depends on your finger, of course, but it's okay. It's okay if it's just the side of your finger, because it is for me. I'll do it one more time. <laughs> And then you see how I just leave it there and then I move that two over see that to get the B and it's fine it's the, the G is already there and it's the same G and it's very good so that's how you why don't we practice that move together let's practice that move together say four times okay so starting here and then we'll do it again okay so let's give that a try one three three on the D string a one, two, go. Let's do it again. Ready, two, go. One more time. Ready, two, go. Okay, feeling good? The hands all look good there, guys. And this is really good because many beginners don't start leaning fingers for a long time. And it's because nobody ever tells them to. <laughs> so being able to get out to do it, like, you know, when you're first starting off is really good. It's a skill that's going to come in handy. So keep doing it. Okay, very good. Now, let's see if we can play. Uh, let's just do the second part slightly faster see if that move is helping us and then we'll try the whole thing a little quicker okay so the second part so we're going to try it like this all right ready to go people Did it go okay not bad let's do it again same thing a little bit more practice on it it'll be great oh one two go <laughs> Repeat. 
Now, the people whose hands that I can see, I was watching your hands at that last time, looking great. You're doing the lean really good. You're leaning back really good, okay? So you're doing it correctly. And if you, you're using the, the least amount of uh, effort in your left hand possible, that's going to be even better, okay? Least amount of effort with the left hand, but it's looking really good. So let's try her from the top a little bit quicker, see if it works, okay? So what's the worst that can happen, right? Everybody's muted. You can tell me you were brilliant after. I wouldn't know. Okay, so let's try it, say, about here. All right. It's approaching cartoon theme tune speed. Ready, two, three, go, two, three. get along at that tempo did it do okay it looked okay heather you looked like you were having a ball there were you surprising yourself a little bit of a train wreck now and then but it was fine okay. it was fun it was fun to go that fast that's good don't worry about the train wrecks you know like you just keep you dust yourself off you keep going you know no big deal and you'll have less that's the thing i remember it was a very similar experience for for me 
when I was first starting to get uh, the Irish kind of sound and rhythm uh, going when I first moved here, and it was kind of like that. Like, you know, I'd be playing away at the session, and would feel great, and I'd feel all powerful. And then I'd kind of like slam up against a wall, you know, and then just kind of pick up the bow and keep going, hope I know where we're starting again. <laughs> so that's good. It's the right experience. It's exactly the way it should go. How about everybody else? You have moderate success there at that speed? That's great. Okay. So keep practicing it with that move. And we're going to get that one up to speed. Because I don't think that there's really any reason why we can't. Okay. Very, very good. Um, <clears throat> all right. Now let's move on to our brand new tune. It's been a while since we learned a brand new tune. Uh, and this is the Devil's Dream. This is a very, very popular tune. So let me just, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever uh, watched that movie called 12 Years a Slave. Have you ever watched that movie? It's a great movie. It's an amazing movie. And the main character in that movie is a fiddle player. He's a he's a, a, an African-American guy, but he plays the fiddle. And it's really kind of quite accurate because... I, you know, when I lived down the States, I, uh, I, you know, talked to people and I discovered that back in those days, it was mostly black people playing this music, which I was surprised at. I was surprised for about five minutes. And, then, and that's where it changed, because what they play is Scottish and Irish music for the most part. But the sound certainly changed a lot down there of the music. And that's why. Right. And in the movie, he plays Devil's Dream. He plays Devil's Dream, and he plays this tune here. Which is another Scottish tune. And it, it's, it's a really great, it's an amazing movie. And the fact that he plays that music, I just love that. You know, it's, it's a little known thing. Now, at a certain point, apparently it was right after the abolition of slavery, all those people threw away their bandolins and fiddles and banjos, and forgot about them for a long time and apparently they're just starting to start playing the music again and there's this uh, this woman called Rhiannon Gibb Giddens she plays the banjo and sings and she's just incredible and she talks a lot about that whole transition but anyway so if you ever get a chance to watch that movie again you're gonna notice the tunes now and it's pretty cool and my one of my favorite parts of the movie that I totally related to is when he was uh, when he was owned by this particular guy who recognized his talent, right? And got him to play every dance that he had at his house. And then one day he gave him a fiddle because he had no fiddle and he was borrowing one. And I'll never forget it because in the movie the guy is captured. He was free and he was captured and re-enslaved. And he had his own fiddle and he was a performer. And the guy, when the guy gave him the fiddle, the guy uh, grabbed it like it was food that he hadn't seen in five months, you know? And I can relate to that. That is like, to me, very poignant. But anyway, so if you ever watch that movie again, you're going to definitely notice the, this tune. So I'm going to play it for you. And there's a couple of different versions. And that's why I mentioned it, because he plays the kind of American version of Devil's Dream, which is slightly different than what we played growing up in Cape Breton. So in the American version, it sounds like this. that but in the curve collection from Scotland in the 1800s it looks like this see that's slightly different but very kind of it's a big difference you know it's a big like it's it's a melodic difference now we're gonna do that version because it is the original and it is what we played growing up in Cape Breton. Uh, but you will I want you to be able to notice how it relates to the other version, because you're going to hear the other version a lot. And hopefully you'll get to the point where you can kind of go back and forth between them. You know, and that's kind of the goal. So first of all, I'm going to play it for you exactly as it's written. A couple of times so you guys can get familiar with the sound of it. I just got to get it up here, The Devil's Dream. That's the Drunken Sailor. Oh, that's a great tune, though. Drunken Sailor is a great tune. Ben? Yes. Did you send out the um, oh, this, the, uh, the music? The music here. It doesn't look like I attached the music. Hold on now. I will right now. 
I did find a good version, but I forgot to attach it. And it's called The Deal Among the Tailors. It's the, uh, Among the Tailors. Hold on now. Where did it go? Okay, just give me one second while I get the music. I, I did find it, but I... Uh, the deal. Amen. Tailors. It's on Tune Folk Finder, which is a great resource. For to, or Sorry, traditional Tune Archive. And that's where I found the good version, because... Oh, there's Shona. Oh, yay. Okay. Yes, this is the good version here. It's from the Kerr collection. Just one second here. And I will send it to you all. Sorry about this, guys. I thought I had already... Uh, traditional Tune Archive. Here we go. That's better. Yeah, this is the good one. And this is from the uh, this is from the, the Kerr collection. So now, so Shift Command Four, quick stream screenshot of this. There we go, and then we'll send this out to all of you. Screenshot. Okay. All right, I've sent it out. So now I'm going to play it a couple times. You guys can get familiar with the sound of it, and then we will play it. Sorry, wrong version. Where is the version that I just had? Where did it go? Yeah, no, this is the one. Okay. It's not that hard, but it's hard. <laughs> it's not a hard melody at all. But the few there's a few fiddle tricks in there that are going to be very handy to get. And a little bit tricky, but definitely worth getting. Okay? So let's take a look at the first part here. Okay. So we got this here. We got the long A. Oh, wait. Before we even attempt it, we should work on the key of A. My God, I forgot. Because it's a completely different uh, shift to the hand, eh? So let's do a quick workout in the key of A. We'll just do a quick scale and arpeggio and make sure we got the stretchies happening for the sharp notes. There's your A. Okay, let's do it. Ready? Go.
let's do that again because I had a couple of whoppers at the bottom there. Let's do it again. Ready? Here's your A. Okay. Ready? Go. for the strengthening. Ready? Go. getting in the shape for the key of A there. Okay, good. So let's take a look at this tune now. Okay. So, starts off with the high A. Okay, and we kind of go, we got this thing where we go A, E, G, A, E, G, A. And, that, and it gets this rhythm. See that? Now, see, you're going to be doing it in the bowing. We're going to use is down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, like that, okay? See how that works there? That's a very, very important uh, bowing element there. And it's just basically where the, where the up, up follows the long notes there. See that? And it kind of re, it kind of, it kind of, makes the bowing pattern be manageable so that you're kind of going down bow for your down beat. Okay, and that's how that works. So that's the bowing, and the melody is just a high A, E, G, A, E, G, A, E, A, and then the D. Okay, that's how it works there. So that whole lick sounds like this. Okay, let's try that guys. Let's try it a couple of times. One, two, three, go. Let's do it again. Same thing. Ready, go. time to be sure. Ready, go. Okay, and then the next bit is the string crossing bit. See that? That's a really fun bit. So, and it goes between D to the F B to the F. Now, aren't you glad you practiced that rollover thing? See that? Because that's what we're going to be doing here. 
and then D F again. B F D F B F and then a big long G. And that's the so this is the second two bars of the tune. Okay? D to the F B to the F. D to the F B to the F. D B long G. Okay, that's how that works there. So let's try it. Now look uh, look what, how I do it with my right hand. So you'll notice it's not like this. Very, very hard to control that, eh? Just a little move with my right hand. Spread and scoop, spread and scoop. Okay, let's try that really slow. So we're trying it the the beginning of the of the uh, third and fourth bar from the D to the F. Okay, let's try that. Neat, really nice and slow. Ready, go. One more time. Ready. Go. One more time to be sure, a little quicker too, tiny bit quicker. Ready, go. tricky part there. Kinda. <laughs> it's not so bad when you're going slow, but when you go fast it gets a little harder. But when you go fast, that's the most important time to make it a small movement. Because when you're going fast, that's when it becomes impossible to do this. And that's how a lot of people get fooled at the beginning when they're going slow, because you can do this going slow. And it's fine, and it works. But then as soon as you get to say about 75 beats per minute, this is no longer possible. And it can be very frustrating. So let's try to see if we can keep it down to a small movement. Use the doorway if you need to or whatever. This is going to be a great tune to practice that. Let's do that again with all that stuff in mind. Just watch my right hand here. Try to make sure you can see it. And let's try it again. Ready, go. One more time. Ready, go. Yeah. Okay. And then we got the first part again. Except an E there. And then we got an ending. Okay. Now this ending is really easy. And it's the same ending in the A part as it is in the B part. It's a twofer. Thank God. I love that. Don't you love that? So it looks like this. Okay, and that's where your arpeggio practice comes in handy there. The one to three stretch. So it's a little scale with a jog. Down we go. E, G sharp. So let's do that ending. Let's do that ending like four times because we, well, we have to do it four times when we play the tune. So let's, let's practice that ending four times. Put a little scale up. Here we go. Ready, go. Let's do it again. Everybody getting that? Ready, go. Again, ready, go. Last time, tiny bit quicker. Ready, go. Yeah, 
Okay, that's the ending. So now we really, we should be able. Hi, Gertie. You got plants? Awesome. She's watering plants. Okay, so now we really should be able to get right from one end to the other. Let's do it. Let's go nice and slow. Small movements with the right hand. Oh, one, two, three, go. <laughs> See how those pieces fit together there? Let's do it again. Let's go even slower. Hey, Dan? Yes, Bill? I've got a problem. I've got this deal among the tailors, and it says violin one. And the last bar of the first line is totally different from what you're playing. Okay, where did you get your deal among the tailors? Like art, it's got violin one, violin two, violin three, and interesting. Okay, well, it's going to be slight, it's it's a slightly different version than what I than what I'm working with, Bill. I sent you the one that I'm working with just a minute ago. See if that helps, because it'll be kind of confusing. But there are a lot of versions of this tune. This one is kind of the simplest one. This one comes out of the uh, Kerr collection, the the old Scottish collection. So it's a little bit simplified, but it is a it is a very good version. So see if you can bring that up. And let's try it again. Okay, so very, very slow. Ultra slow there, people. Okay, here we go. Oh, one, two, three, go! problems are people having where and when are the problems anyone anyone how about you Deborah you look like you were grimacing at your computer screen a couple times <laughs> I don't have it printed out in front of me because the printer's in the other room um, but yeah I've got the first bar and the last bar that's it <laughs> okay I'm gonna share. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen so everybody can see it at the same time because I think that's kind of what's going on there. I should have sent this out before. I thought I did. It's one of those, one of those things where I thought I'd done it. Can you see that? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. 
Okay, let's try it again, people. Okay, nice and slow. I think Bill's probably going to print it off too. Ready, go! that better yeah okay good okay so let's try playing it about 300 times there people see if we can get this going now, so keep an eye and see when Bill joins up again I'll have to stop and let him in but otherwise let's give it a go okay nice and slow about 500 times ready go oh there's Bill <laughs> it's good got good timing Okay, here we go. One, two, three, go! everybody feeling now not too bad anybody having any problems that are getting in the way no okay let's try it a tiny bit quicker then all right tiny bit quicker oh there's Bill again make sure he gets in here there's Bill okay 
So I'm gonna do this again so everybody can see it. And we're gonna try her once more. Little tiny bit quicker, not too quicker, just a bit. All right, so let's try it kind of like this. Let's see what happens when we go that fast. Oh, one, two, three, go. Okay, are we getting through it? For the most part? What's what's the problem you're having, Deborah? I think I need new bifocals. <laughs> <laughs> I can make this bigger. Actually, I, I think I can, uh, I'll get it up as a screenshot. There's, there's Bill again. He's having trouble getting on there. How's that? Beautiful. <laughs> all right, all right. Good, good, good. Okay, let's give it one more go then, in that case. Just make sure that nobody's having any problems, vision problems or anything else. Bifocals I hear are really good. I'm sure that time is coming for me. Okay, same speed. Ready, go. looking a little bit more successful. 
Are people feeling a bit better about it there? That's great. Okay. So now, let's move on to the second part. More string changing. Now, the nice thing is, I don't know if you noticed yet, but the second two bars of the B part there are exactly like the string changing bit in the first part. Okay, so D, F, B, F, D, F, B, F, D, F, B, F again. So it's exactly the same lick. Okay, the only notes that are different are these three notes here from these three notes here. See that? That's the only difference. So we already kind of have that part there. Okay, so that's, and then in the, in the first bit, so it's like the whole part is string changing. So you string change between the C and the E and the A and the E. That's an A major arpeggio. And then you string change between the D and the, and the F and the B and the F. And that's kind of like a G arpeggio. Uh, e. E arpeggio. So if I was the guitar player, I'd be playing an E chord during that part. See what I mean there? Okay. So A arpeggio, E arpeggio, A arpeggio again and then this ending that we already know. Now, when I'm looking at the first string changing, there's not really an opportunity to do a rollover anywhere. See that? And you notice I kind of pick up my finger for those A's. See that? Again, it's the small move with the right hand. And then we got a long B. And then we do the E major one. Okay, so let's see if we can do the first one, the A major one. C to E, A to E, C to E, A to E. We do that move three times. Okay, slow. C to E, A to E. Ready? Go. Okay, let's just leave it at that D. We'll do it again. Ready? Go. Quicker, try it again. Ready, go. Doing good. One more time to be sure. Ready, go. That's the pickup for that next part that I, we already know. So let's run through that next part now. We'll use, we'll just do it right from the D to the F. So we're starting first note of the third bar of the second part. Ready, D to F. Okay, yeah, let's do it again, that part. Ready, and. And then you can kind of guess what comes next. <laughs> first phrase again. So now, let's see if we can hook together the first phrase and the second phrase. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's do the second phrase, but this time with the pickup. So the D and the C. Okay, the D and the C that come before it. Let's try it with that. And that's going to be on an up bow. One, two, three.
now that we got the pickup, we should join that together really easy. So let's do it. Let's start beginning of the third line and go right through. Let's see if we can go right through. You never know. It might work. Okay, C to E. Ready, go! Did that work? Pretty well? Cool. That's great. Let's do it about 300 times, shall we? Same speed. Ready? Go! second there. How's everybody feeling about that string changing part? <laughs> so you can see why we're doing this. This is going to be a very good strengthener of the string changing for all you guys. Also the arpeggios strengthens those as well. Okay because there's a lot of this string changing business in our music like we do a lot of it and it's one of the main things that slows people down. Mostly because of what I was telling you about the, the elbow, trying to do it with the elbow and you can never keep up. And so that's kind of the number one problem with those string changings. The number two problem is the finger positioning that I was we were working on before, where you try to roll over a finger if you can or get out of the way of the other string and leave a finger down. Like in the second part, that's what you got to be careful of. You put that two down. You want to leave it there as much as you can, right? Except to take it up for the open eighth. But when it's there, you can't be touching the E string. So you got to get over the fiddle, curled fingers straight over the fiddle so that you're not touching that E string. So very good practice with that. Now I'm just going to check in with everybody. How's everybody feeling so far? Not too bad? Okay. Anybody having any problems with anything that I can help with before we... Take the grinder to it. It's Let's, just, it's slow for me, Dan, because I'm having to read the music, so it's slowing me down, but it's it's a good kick in the rear end because, like, I should be reading the music, so. Well, it is anyway, good. so it's, it it's is, just going a little slow. Sure, that's okay, and it is good to read the music. Now, remember your little tricks for reading the music, right? 
If the note is on a line, it's going to be two or open, always. If the note is on a space, it's going to be one or three. And this tune is such a good example of that. You notice that? That's basically, that's what we're doing. Like, And, and the combos, I don't know if you noticed this, but the combos, so the first one is the two in the open. Two, open, 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 two, open, 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 two, open, open, the even numbers, right? Then the next one is all the odd numbers. One, one, three, one, or what is it? Three, one, 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 three, one, one, one. So it's this half of your hand. See that? So the one string changing bit is this half of your hand, and the other string changing is that half of your hand. So that takes down your variables when you're trying to guess what note you're about to play next. Now, that being said, if you want, I can put some finger numbers in there. Should I do that? Do you want me to do that, or do you want to try to carry on without them? That's, that's okay, Dan. It's, okay. Uh, it's good learning. It's okay, fine. that's good. Remember those little tricks to take down your guessing, though. Anybody else having any problems like that? That was good to bring up, because this is a great tune for practicing that whole idea, because it really does follow that rule right down to the letter. Anybody else having any bits like that? As I say, just the one thing that was causing me problems in that second part, when I get to the end and finish on a down bow, I got somehow turned around going back to the second time through because I ended up like up, down, and then yeah. figure out where to do it. So I guess it's up, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Yeah, now you see that you, 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 you bring something up that I was about to bring up, which is the fact that this particular tune here doesn't have pickup notes in the, uh, in the version that we're looking at. Eh? There's no pickup notes, just the great big long A to finish each part. Now, for me to turn around my bow, I would use a pickup note. I would add a pickup note. See that? Because you're right, you're going down bow for that long A, and you need to start the tune on a down bow. So it kind of makes for an awkward. Now, there's two ways that you can deal with this very, very common problem with a tune. You can either finish your long A, and then when you start the part again, just keep going down. And that is a very common way to do it. So it looks like this. See that it's easy it's and it's a good skill to have now it's not a skill I use a really really huge amount I always add a pickup note right but I know which note to add just right off the top of my head it's not a mystery to me so I I think it's a little complicated for beginners to just add a pickup note you know what I mean but I will tell you which note I would add if you were to add a pickup note I would actually just play the E and the G again. So, see what I mean by that? So it's the E and the G that's in that first part. I'm going to use that as a pickup note. Two pickup notes, I should say. Okay? So you could do that. So your A could be on the down, and then you could play an E and a G to turn your bow around on the up bow, and then you're starting down nice and hunky-dory again. See that? Or you can do the move that I explained before, which is stop your bow and keep going down, which is the simpler way to do it, and a good move to get good at. I'll tell you that. It has come in handy many times. Okay? Now let's take a look at the second part and see what we got to do there to turn around. Oh, yeah. So I would play, do you see here, oh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so here we got the, the Dale, the Dales among the Taylors. So here we got this ED thing here at the end of the line. You see that? ED. I would use the ED thing to get back into the part again. So again, you can either do the stop and keep going down, which would look like this. It really works. It's totally fine. And like I said, a good skill to get. Or I would add that ED. Which is also very nice. You see how that works there? Okay. You make your own choice. If I were you, I would try the stop and keep going thing first. See if that works. If it doesn't work, if it's, you know, if it's weird on your bow arm, we can get them pickup notes in there, but that's a little bit more complicated. 
Okay, does that answer your question? Very good question. I'm glad you brought it up. Anybody else have anything like that they'd like to talk about before we take the grinder to it? Can you hear me? Yep. I hate to keep bugging you, but like I went back onto my uh, email and I clicked your thing and there were, there were two things that I could see and both of them were you playing, but neither of them were, were the music. Okay, I'm going to check out those videos because I'm not sure if I got exactly the same version as I played on the video, but I will make sure, after I'm finished here, I will make sure that the videos are exactly the same as the version we're playing here. Okay? okay. You're absolutely right there, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely right. Okay, so shall we give it a go? The whole thing. Let's do it. Here we go. Ready, go!
little faster. dream the deals among the tailors how's everybody feeling about it so far starting to get it that's great i don't know why they named it the the, the devil among the tailors but it reminded me of a story elaine do you remember yazer brothers in sydney the clothing store yes i do yes did you yeah. ever know the story about the two brothers that came from israel to open that store no. It's an amazing story. They came over because the Yazer brothers that we knew were actually the sons of the, or, or grandsons. I can't remember how many generations of the people that came over way, way back from Israel. These two brothers. And they had all these, they were tailors, and they had all the clothes and stuff they were selling on their back. And they would wander up around the Cabot Trail stopping in at people's houses and trying to sell this stuff. And so they spent about two, one guy went one way around the Cabot Trail, the other guy went the other way. And they met at the top, and they were they were camped out. And the one guy said to the other, "How did you do?" And he said, "Oh, I did very well." And you know, I did this and that and everything. And then he said, "How did you do?" And the other fellow said, "I did great. I learned how to speak English." It was like, "Wow, that's amazing!" So so then they when they finished up the cabin trail, they went into Sydney to open their business. And the guy had not learned English at all. He learned Gaelic. <laughs> I love that story. And they were great guys, the Azer brothers. My, my father went there for his clothes. And they, they were really, really nice guys. And I remember them very well. Yeah. I can remember just vaguely uh, them coming around. Really? And so, yeah. Wow, yeah. neat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were speaking a mixture of uh, Yiddish and, and Gaelic, I suppose. <laughs> Which is just great. Okay, now that I've distracted you, let's try her again a little tiny bit faster, and we'll think about the boys wandering around with the clothes on their back. All right? And they were not devils at all. They were very nice fellas. Okay, so just slightly faster. I'll put the music up on my screen again.
just to be sure. So we're thinking maybe about like and we're gonna do it twice. So if you have to stop, that's fine. Just hop in at that next phrase if you have to stop, okay? We're gonna go through it twice. Okay. Oh, one, two, three, and.
stream. Okay, that's great. So now, so we've gone through it. We've learned it. We've learned the string crossing challenges and, and the uh, the key and the arpeggios involved. And so now, to, to address the version issue, because when I made the recordings there a couple of days ago, I like when we were on today, I couldn't quite find that same exact version that I recorded a couple of days ago. So I'm going to make it, but the only difference is between the two versions is the other one is a little bit more complicated. There's just a little, few more notes involved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video of this version simplified. So that's what it's going to be called on the, on the channel, Devil's Dream Simplified. I'll leave the other versions on there because you'll see that one is just a slight expansion on the other, a few more scales. That's all it is, right? And I think it would be totally accessible to all of you uh, to be able to do that. Uh, so I'm going to make that video. It'll be called Simplified, but I'll leave the other ones up there. And this is what you're going to aspire to. And I want you to compare the two and see how one is an expansion of the other, okay? As I know that different versions can be very, very confusing, absolutely, but there's really kind of no way around it, you know, <laughs> because there are so many versions of each of these tunes. All right. Yes. The one that you put up, <clears throat> was that the, cur uh, the one from the Kerr book? That's the one from the Kerr book. Okay. Yeah, and I saw the one that I got there is not quite. So I'll... I'll clarify i'll send you also the music from the from the one from the cur book as well okay send you both versions what do you got there heather i'm wondering what version is this i don't know if you can see it or not it's the little bit more complicated version where did you get that one uh, just off the internet, I looked for something that looked fairly simple, but I guess it's not so simple. <laughs> it's just a little, you'll see. It's just got a couple of more scales in it. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So anyway, so I'll clarify those versions. Yes, Bill? That's exactly the version that I have. Okay. The one that she showed you. Yeah, okay, okay. So so that's that version there. The, uh, the videos that I sent you are going to be exactly kind of like that. I can see that that's the same version as I was playing there on the video. Um, and uh, But I will make a video of this simplified version. I think this simplified version is really good practice. like Because really the tune is the string changing things. That's what the tune is, right? And so this version kind of gives you the first string changing, the second very simply without a whole lot of of uh, extra notes so i think it's good to have but i think i would love to expand on to that more complicated version as we go along okay so i will clarify that i will get all that out to you and bill i'll send you the zoom link for the two for the uh, monday night class and see if you like that okay okay thanks a lot guys thanks again for the sunday morning i really enjoyed myself and we'll see you guys next week thank you very much Bye-bye.